Hey, Dr. C here with you. I want to talk about an oil that you probably haven't thought of or heard of for some time, and that's safflower oil. Now, oils in general, just a quick overview, they're parts of the diet that are useful. Uh, things stick pretty badly in the kitchen without them, and sometimes they can supply some useful nutrients. However, they are always processed foods. So when I talk about a good oil, it's not something you want to really comprise the bulk of your food intake from. They have primarily empty calories of, of all types. So they are good to use in sparing amounts and be thoughtful of the type. But yeah, again, not things to add in or fortify or to treat like supplements per se. They can also have useful effects on the skin, you know, topically for purposes like that. Now, let's do a quick primer here on what's relevant to oils with uh, nutrients and fatty acids. So Essential fats, there's a couple of fats we need that we cannot generate inside of our bodies. Those are called the essential fatty acids. There's just two of those. There's omega-3 and omega-6. There are also fats like omega-9 and saturated fats. Now, omega-9 has been talked about as being good, mostly because we see that many cultures like the Mediterraneans have consumed a lot of it and had good health outcomes. And there may be benefits from the polyphenols in it, it may be a neutral source of calories for those who are active, but it doesn't, omega-9 is not an essential fat. So that's the same as monounsaturated. And yeah, it might be quite neutral, but it's not one that we need that our bodies cannot make. And then we have saturated fat to be aware of. And for a while, we demonized it and thought that every speck of it was harmful. That was never true. But there's also been movements going the opposite way and almost like deifying it and saying, we need more saturated fat. It's essential. It's healthy. And that's certainly not true. Our bodies do run on saturated fats for building certain structures, but we make it whenever we want it. So there's, there's no such thing as a saturated fat deficiency. And there's no chemical reactions that work better by adding in high amounts of saturated fat from things like coconut oil or lard or butter. It doesn't happen because the body itself can make those fats when it needs them. So when you add in things the body can make that aren't supplying essential nutrients, that's how we define empty calories. So white flour, white sugar, saturated fats, those are all things that contain caloric content, but no essential nutrients. So with oils, we also think about, of course, where they come from, you know, what are their sources? We think about there being any contaminants. There are oils that are expressed by chemicals. And the concern there is one could have hexane residues. And we consider also the smoke point. You know, some oils are quite fragile at any temperature and they oxidize. They make free radicals that we'd rather avoid. So in general, oils are considerations because we need those essential fats, but we can get those from nuts and seeds, from freshwater fish, also some vegetables, intact whole grains. These things can all have some of those. And we'll talk in other episodes about details and the essential fats and how much you need and what the sources are. But this is a focus more so on safflower. Now, in general, you can get this in different versions. There's uh, unmodified plain old safflower oil, and there's high oleic safflower oil. Now, the high oleic is a lot like olive oil in the types of fats that it contains. It's primarily an omega-9. And for those, it, for those purposes, I would argue other omega-9 fats are easier to find and oftentimes can have other compounds in them as well, such as the pigments or polyphenols in olive oil. So if you're not thinking about essential fats, for omega-9s, you're just as well to use olive. It's more available and more recipes are built around it. But the unmodified safflower is distinct in that it's one of the higher sources of linoleic acid. And that's one of the two essential fats that's the one we need in the highest quantity. So we'll talk more about why that's relevant. This is one that also has a very high smoke point. So its smoke point is around 500, 510 degrees. And that means you can saute with it at a much higher temperature than you can with olive oil or even many other oils like avocado or grapeseed or almond oil. This is a pretty stable one that can handle some heat, even higher than canola oil. Another perk about safflower oil it's low cost stuff. It's not expensive. It's readily available. And it's a very neutral flavor. So you can add that to dressings or other bases or sauces as need be, and it won't really change the flavor of compounds. Now, some argue that safflower oil is a good source of conjugated linoleic acid. 
which is a non-essential fat, but may be a beneficial fat for human metabolism. Well, it does have it, but you know, the devil's always in the details. It's got about seven milligrams per tablespoon. So yeah, it's there, but with conjugated linoleic acid, when it's been shown to be helpful, that's in doses of thousands of milligrams. And at seven milligrams per tablespoon, you're not gonna get there. <laughs> so I wouldn't consider that one of its benefits. So from human research, we've seen data showing that it lowers LDL and it lowers apolipoprotein B. Now that's true for baseline levels of LDL or lipoprotein B, but it's also been shown that if those things are raised by coconut oil or butter, which do tend to raise them, then safflower oil can lower them back down again. Safflower oil has also been shown to decrease total inflammation. It can have some anti-cancer properties. Those are cell studies. Those are not human outcome studies. Uh, a lot of data has shown that it's very helpful for dry skin, irritated skin, dermatitis. And that's true both in oral forms of it, you know, eating it, but also putting it on topically. And it's a nice oil for those purposes because it's been shown that the essential fat linoleic acid does help where you place it by its topical effect. So if you're lower in that, or if your skin is irritated, just having it on the site can at that area, improve the level of essential fats and the repair of skin. And then also been shown to improve wound healing. Um, here's a quick overview, an image I'm gonna share with you that shows the known properties of safflower oil that have been documented to occur in humans. So quite a lot of cool stuff. We've got data showing that it can prevent and manage actinic keratosis, which is a, a cancerous change of the skin relative to sun exposure. Uh, and this is true from some of the polyphenols, also the sesamol found in it, which is found in it and also from sesame oil. Also, it's been shown to reverse and prevent skin aging. There's a, and systemically, in, internally, there's an anti-inflammatory effect. And we think about that because of the linoleic and linolenic acid, omega-3 and 6, also the phospholipids, the triterpenes, the polyphenols. We also know that orally and topically it affects skin barrier repair for a lot of these same reasons. It also has beneficial effects upon the microbial balance in the gut. It has antibacterial properties overall, so useful for the immune system, been shown to help wound healing, been shown to benefit permeability of the gut, and also shown to have some antioxidant properties. So pretty cool stuff. And yeah, one that's very underutilized. Now, there's been studies on those who are receiving total parenteral nutrition to where they've had a loss of intestinal function so badly that all their nourishment has to come by IV. And in those cases, they can develop deficiencies of essential fats unless they're given fat as part of their intravenous nutrition. But in the early days of TPN, many were not. And that's actually how we learned a lot of what we know now about essential fats and their deficiency. And in those cases, they showed that topical uh, safflower oil would not only have surface benefits on dermatitis, but it would have a whole body effect upon the status for essential fats. So putting it on actually helps you. It's like kind of like eating it. You get similar benefits you get from eating it as far as taking in the essential fats. So that's pretty cool. You know, a habit that many talk about is using it not even like after bathing, but during bathing, like just a small amount applying to your skin while showering. And that way it mixes well with the water. Well, not like, you know, oil and water don't mix per se, but your skin, when it's moist, it has a better beneficial effect by the application of the oil barrier. You seal in that moisture more effectively. There's also been studies showing that it may be a useful adjunct with weight loss diets. One study was done on women in which they were given a small amount, uh, one and two thirds of a teaspoon daily from safflower oil, and it had a pretty measurable effect upon improving body composition. It reduced trunk adipose in both diet periods. And the average weight loss difference was in, in the groups correlated with about a 6.3% loss of starting adipose tissue. The same study also showed improvements to fasting glucose and higher amounts of lean body mass. So for linoleic acid, safflower oil is the densest known dietary source, a very good source of that. There's been thought about linoleic acid being a harmful thing, about us getting too much of that. I did do a really deep discussion on that in a separate post where I encourage you to check out. 
as far as action step goes, grab some safflower oil. And I like the ones that are not the high oleic acid, which is easier to find, but just regular safflower oil. That can be a little trickier, but most of your bigger health food supermarkets will have that, or you can always get that online through typical online shopping resources like Thrive Market or Amazon. You can find high linoleic acid safflower oil. I like to use it in the kitchen in a little mister bottle. There are the oils you can get that are already made that come in the spray cans and those work, but you know, you've got more propellants and you've got more stuff in there. The bottles nowadays, the pump ones, they work pretty well. They don't clog up too easily. And when they do, you can clean them. And I just add safflower oil to one and keep that by the stovetop and use that for misting a lot of cooking services nowadays. In the past, I had used many others, but given what I've learned about linoleic acid and also the high smoke point of safflower oil, it's now my go-to. And it's also a great thing to have in the bathroom for putting a little on while you're bathing or afterwards for any irritated skin. So good stuff to make use of. All right, Dr. C here with you. Uh, take great care of yourself and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.